Texas has always been a land rich with resources and opportunities. At the turn of the 20th century, it seemed everyone was moving to the Lone Star State to build a future. Demand for housing rose, but with it came the swindlers and con artists who preyed on the unsuspecting. In those days, brokers were called dealers and their agents were called operators. The unscrupulous operators, they were referred to as curb stoners. The curb stoner relies almost wholly upon sensational literature and exaggerated statements in the conduct of real estate transactions. He has no commercial standing or reputation to maintain and generally regards the party with whom he deals as a victim instead of a customer whose interest he is supposed to represent. A.A. Richardson, Austin. Real estate dealers from across Texas began to meet. Their goal, to bring professional conduct to the industry. In April 1911, the Texas State Realty Association was born. In July in San Antonio, a convention was held that same year, and it was hailed as the largest, most successful meeting of real estate people Texas has ever seen. They discussed regulations and licensing and standardized forms, ideas that embody the pillars of our association today. Activity flourished with plans for a statewide land exposition. The following year at a convention in Houston, the Texas State Realty Association adopted a campaign for compulsory registration of real estate dealers. The future never looked brighter. But when war broke out in Europe, the organization disappeared, and with it, our hopes for a licensing law. Not until 1920 was that hope renewed. Frank McNenny, serving as Dallas board president and vice president of the National Association of Real Estate Boards, spearheaded a small meeting in Dallas with representatives from around the state. The first thing they did is drafted a bill providing for licensing and regulation. Then they elected officers and set a convention date. The convention for the newly founded Texas Association of Real Estate Boards was held two months later at the Gunter Hotel in San Antonio. Organizers pulled out all the stops. For their first banquet, they got together four of their best hunters and sent them out to kill deer, quail, turkey, and ducks for the banquet. All I can say is, those guys must have been darn good hunters because they spent only somewhere around $4 for shells. The newly elected president, Lawrence Miller Sr., presided as attendees spent two days crafting details of a licensing bill that would establish the first ever Texas Real Estate Commission. Attendees left that convention believing that the license law and the Texas Real Estate Commission would soon become a reality. And it took 19 years to overcome the opposition in the Texas legislature. Finally, due to efforts from the association, the Real Estate Dealers License Act was signed into law by Governor W. Lee Pappy O'Daniel in 1939. Phony land deals and lot sales will be less frequent in Texas after September. Austin American. But the association's goal of creating a real estate commission remained out of reach. If they'd have just opened up membership to women, they'd have probably gotten this done in half the time. It was a struggle to achieve their goals. <laughs> what the members learned is that advocacy is hard work. Of course, they didn't have a powerful PAC or the level of membership support we have today. It was a full decade later, in 1949, that the Texas Real Estate Commission was established. In 1957, the association formed the first real estate institute in the U.S. This educational program became the model for many real estate course providers throughout the nation. Back in 1972, we worked with the state bar to be able to create standardized forms. Those were actually envisioned back in 1911. And let me tell you something, if you don't think that standardized farms aren't a big deal, just go to some state that doesn't have them and ask somebody what it's like there. The association progressed, always holding on the core values of professionalism, advocacy, and providing resources for members. Success began to come at a rapid pace. Realtors in 1993 worked hard to pass strong home equity protection. 
That's why in 2007, we didn't see the high foreclosures and plummeting prices that you saw throughout the rest of the United States. In 1992, we hired an attorney to answer members' questions on the phone. That was the start of our legal hotline. We offer professional standard services across the state, broadcast classes, the Texas Realtors Leadership Program, insurance reform, eminent domain, property taxes, transfer fees. Realtors have been there to protect the industry and property owners. More than 100 forms made exclusively for members, research and data, support on local matters through issues mobilization, and unparalleled legislative and political influence. It was the vision of those Texans so long ago that drives what we do today and strive for tomorrow. Professionalism, advocacy, resources. These pillars of our association were inspired by the Texas Realtors before us who set us on the path we travel today. Celebrating 100 years of shaping Texas.